hey welcome back to the truly youtube channel i'm chelsea and this is episode 11 of the truly knits podcast that's kind of crazy i should look back and see when i started doing this because i can't believe it's episode 11 is that true what have i been talking about for this long today is saturday december 10th and i decided it was well i realized i've known it's high time for an update i shared a pretty big goal in my last podcast episode of wanting to finish everything on my needles, wanting to clear my needles for 2023 and progress has been made so looking forward to sharing about that and kind of seeing how that goal has maybe evolved a little bit over the last month. I am sick again, you could probably hear it in my voice. The whole world is sick right now, like this flu season, not a great situation. I don't have the flu thankfully. But I have been really congested and I have a cough. Again, I've spent this entire year coughing. Like, no thank you. I'm just done. I'm done with it. No more coughing for 2023. Hopefully it won't be too annoying trying to hide my sick voice as much as possible. But I am like an octave lower than I usually am. So maybe not a whole octave, but a few steps. To begin, my newest finished object is what I'm wearing today. And I'm so happy I finally got this done because it was, well, first of all, it was supposed to be my November sweater, but we got into a fight <laughs> and uh, I didn't work on it for several days. Anyway, let's introduce her. This is the Wednesday sweater by Petite Knit. I guess I'm a little too far forward for you to see the whole thing, but here's most of it. I knit this with Filcolana Peruvian Highland Wool in the color Marzipan and uh, the Kinetic Knitters Suri Alpaca Lace in the color Crowd Pleaser. I think I bought 10 balls of the Filcolana and I have two balls left over and I have one full skein of Crowd Pleaser left plus like half a skein. So no yarn chicken, which was very satisfying. If you follow me on Instagram and saw my story about the fight that me and the sweater got into, I knit one sleeve completely wrong. And I knit the sleeves last, which was a little bit unusual for me but I was really nervous about doing this turtleneck and the amount of ribbing at the bottom, which is, it's all twisted. I haven't done twisted rib before, so I was pretty nervous about how long these sections were going to take me. So once I ran out of my first yarn balls on the body, I decided to do the neck, A, because I was nervous about how long it was gonna take, and B, because I've heard a lot of people talk about how like when you do the neck, it changes the fit of how the shoulders drape and how everything just kind of hangs on your body. And so I wanted to give myself the best chance that the sweater would be, would fit well. And so I decided to do the neck before I did anything else. So I think my last podcast, I just had like a chunk of the body done, something like that. And so it was about that much and I started doing the neck and I, I breezed through it. Like it was great. The twisted rib was a little tedious, but I enjoyed almost the whole process. Just like the last couple of inches maybe, I started being like, okay, I have to purl through the back loop one more time. But I actually didn't mind it. That was done and then I finished the rest of the body because the bottom ribbing is like another 14 centimeters of twisted rib. And then I wasn't sure if I was going to do this little split on the sides because that's not a feature I typically look for when I'm shopping for sweater, like store-bought sweaters. I decided to try it on this sweater because I figured if I didn't like it, I could always seam it up later and have that work. But I actually really like it and I think it's really cute. It kind of, it breaks up the fabric nicely. I already showed you so I don't need to stand up again, but I don't know. It just works. Petite Knit knew what she was talking about when she put that little feature in there. And then the sleeve saga began. So I don't know which sleeve is which, but so picking up stitches. For the first size, you have to pick up 60 stitches for the sleeve. And the first time I just, I picked up where I thought stitches should be picked up without counting. And I ended up with like 78 stitches. And I was like, that's not gonna work. 
So I tore it out and I redid it and I ended up with like 68 stitches. And I was like, there is no way I'm gonna get down to 60 stitches. So I went with my 68 and I just, I decided to do a bunch of decreases right away. So it kind of ended up with this little like notch. <laughs> and then I just kept knitting and knitting and knitting, like oh, knitting happily along my merry way and forgot to do the pattern decreases for like 13 centimeters. So I was really close to the ribbing and did a bunch of, again, speedy increases. So we had a sleeve that was like, had a little notch and then do 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 and then whoosh, like it was shaped very funny. And then I started doing the ribbing and I was doing it very lazily on my 16 inch circulars with, I think, I don't know how many stitches I ended up with, 48 maybe. I wasn't doing it tightly enough. It was just not a good situation. And so I tried it on and it w had this really awkward, not drapey, like it was just too big. And so I was like, I don't think this sleeve can go on the way that it is. I knew I had to rip it out, but I didn't rip it out right away and I tossed it to the side and left it for a few days and then decided to just knit the other sleeve making sure it was exactly to pattern and I was like there's a chance that it'll turn out kind of similar enough that I won't have to rip it out like maybe they won't be obviously different but naturally once I knit this <laughs> the second sleeve exactly to pattern I was like this is how I want the sleeve to look so I ripped out the sleeve started over and as soon as I ripped it out and had one sleeve left, I would, I knit, I ripped it out at night. The next day I cast on the sleeve and I knit the whole sleeve in one day. Like I was passionate about getting this sweater done because it'd been on my needles for what felt like forever. Cause it's like, a, it's a chunky sweater. There's a lot of knitting involved here. So I knit the sleeve in one day and finished it up and I am so happy that it's done. It's just beautiful. I'm so excited with how the colors worked out, how they, it just, it's so cute. I can't believe I made it. I did alternate skeins, which I think was a good idea. We all know because of the nature of hand-dyed yarn, you should alternate skeins if you want your project to look cohesive isn't the right word, but I don't know, just to avoid like big blocks of the same color depending on how your skein knits up. I just feel like this one, the colors were soft enough that they just kind of, wherever they went was fine with me. And in terms of the colors where they fell, I did not notice a difference alternating skeins versus not alternating skeins. The only thing I noticed was that a couple of the skeins had deeper colors on one end of it and then softer colors on the other end of it. So it worked well to like integrate those differences, but in terms of where the color was placed on the skein, I didn't notice a difference when I was alternating and when I wasn't. It ended up working out how I did it. Like some of it is alternated and some of it's not, and you can't really tell where those changes happened. I don't know that this is my first non-superwash sweater because let's think about for this for a second. My first sweater was Drops Air. That might not be superwash. My second sweater was Drops Wish. I feel like those are not super wash, but don't quote me. And then I started doing hand dyed yarn sweaters, which are all super wash. Anyway, I was really interested to work with Peruvian Highland wool, which is not the super wash. I had in my mind that I was working with something new, which maybe I wasn't, but it was a new yarn to me. So there's at least that. And I loved it. The pattern recommended using Peruvian Highland wool. I can see why, like it, ha it gives a lot of really nice structure to this like very, sculptural textural piece. I couldn't be happier with the yarn choice. I think it turned out perfectly and I love it. That is my Wednesday sweater. I'm so <laughs> glad to have a finished object for this podcast. I didn't think it was going to happen. I have two others that I don't have in my possession. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Well, I guess I did want to talk to you guys about the um, double knitting, which is before you do the Italian bind off, you do like two rounds of double knitting, which is like a combination of slipping and knitting and stuff. And is it supposed to look like this? 
you can very clearly see the difference. There's like lines in between each of them. And here too, on the sleeve. Is that how double knitting is supposed to look? Because that's how all of mine looks, I don't know. It doesn't look the best to me, but it doesn't bother me either. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm trying to think also if there are any mistakes to report. Oh, I didn't finish talking about the sleeve. So, this one I picked up way too many stitches and re it. The other one, when I went to start my second sleeve, I couldn't pick up enough stitches. I had to get to 60, and my first pass, I got like 52. And I was like, how is this possible? I ended up with 78 stitches the first time I picked up over here. And over here, I ended up with 52. How is that possible? So I did it again and ended up with like a lot closer, like 56 or something like that. I probably picked up my stitches maybe like six times over this course of this whole sweater. We made it through. <laughs> And it looks great. The other thing I was thinking about with non-superwash wool is that I've heard, oh yeah, so here's the thing. I've heard that non-superwash wool doesn't stretch as much when blocking as superwash. And as I'm thinking now, my first sweater, which I knit with Drops Air, stretched a ton when I blocked it. Like the sleeves stretched like four or five inches. And I wonder if that's because, I'm pretty sure there's alpaca in Drops Air, and I'm wondering if that has anything to do with it. This definitely, it's still stretched. I didn't measure it before blocking, which maybe I should have because it fit like amazingly before I blocked it. Now it's a little more oversized, which I'm okay with, but I loved, it was perfect before I blocked it. And so I should have measured, I measured it after, when it was on the blocking mats just to make sure everything was even, like the sleeves were the same length but it was like a cuter, different fit before I blocked it. It's still great, but it was like sublime before I blocked it. But I really wanted to see the stitches like, you know, do their thing, relax, hang out, and now I'm happier with the knitting, but I do miss that cute little like, not so oversized fit. There's always something to learn with every project, and now I like have that consciousness that like, non-super wash wool does still stretch out when you block it, so. I can log that away for my next project. I think I'm definitely going to be reaching for it a lot because it's so cozy and our house gets so cold in the winter. So, big fan, big fan. Let's move on to the finished objects that I don't have with me, which are birthday socks for my family. If you have been following along, you'll know that I've been knitting a pair of socks for every member of my family's birthday this year. And in November, my sister and her husband's birthdays were the last ones. Whew. I have eight adult members of my family. I have not graduated yet to knitting tiny uh, toddler socks. I did my sister, dad, brother, mom, brother, sister, and brother-in-law. So seven, did I get everybody? Seven pairs of socks for my family. Yeah, because I'd be the eighth member. Okay, there we go. That math adds up. For my sister's socks, I knit a free stitch pattern that I found online on someone's blog. So I will link what I did in the description. And I used Olivia and Oliver Fiber's sock set in Elderflower, which is from her Spring Meadows collection. And the contrast color is called Cotton. For my sister's socks, I did exactly the same size I do, 64 stitches for the circumference, and then knit the foot to her shoe size. And I really enjoyed the pattern that I chose. I think it's kind of a variation of ribbing. It's like a, I don't remember what the blog post called it, but it turned out really pretty and it really worked well with the Olivia and Oliver Fibers yarn. Those turned out really pretty and they were way on time for her birthday. I think I finished them like a week at least before her birthday. Christopher's on the other hand, his birthday's November 30th. I finished them on November 30th at 5 p.m. and we opened his birthday presents at like 5.05. So we were down to the wire on that pair. But his I knit with Lavender Loon Yarn Co, which was my first time using Lavender Loon. She is a dyer in Northern Minnesota. My brother-in-law is from Northern Minnesota, so I loved having that connection. And then the color I chose is called Belle Prairie, which is a super bright uh, cookie monster blue, I like to call it, that is my brother-in-law's favorite color. He's like a big outdoorsy guy, and so the like Northern Minnesota Prairie just 
it, it was the perfect yarn. It was meant to be a pair of socks for him. I just did a little like contrast cuff with some spare yarn that I had and then knit the rest of the sock in the blue, except for the toe. I did a large, which I think they've reported back and said that it fits. So the large was, I think like I've mentioned, too big for my brothers. I'm still working through my men's <laughs> sock sizing. The last time I mentioned that, I got so many great recommendations in the comments for how to like adjust, adapt to men's socks. And the most helpful thing has been increasing the length of the slip stitch heel flap so that there are more gusset stitches to pick up, which just makes some extra room in that like widest part of the sock, like where you have to fit it over your heel and your ankle at the same time. So that was an amazing tip. Thank you to everyone who made suggestions. So now I think, I think like a 68 to 70 would be a good cast on number for the men in my life. <laughs> and using when I'm using a 2.5 millimeter needle because for my socks I use 2.25 I like that kind of tighter fit I'm more confident knitting socks for myself so I know how the tighter fit is going to go but for gift socks I typically knit with a 2.5 millimeter needle just so there's like that little bit of extra give in the sock when I'm kind of guessing on size so Christopher's first sock was actually done like a week before his birthday as well or no, started like the week before his birthday. The second one, I cast it on at about 7 p.m. on November 28th. And I finished <laughs> at about 5 p.m. on November 30th. I finished a size large men's sock in less than 48 hours, which I was pretty proud of. And then I gave them to him at the present opening time and then promptly took them back to block them. So I didn't actually get to see them like see him try them on but like I said they reported back that they fit well so I'm happy with that. Those are my finished objects for this podcast. While you might be thinking everything else will be things you've seen before because my rule was to not cast anything on until I cleared my needles, I was able to find a loophole <laughs> as one does when they have a chaotic cast on energy. I've actually been working at a yarn store. I have a job at a yarn store right now and yes it is as dreamy and romantic as you'd imagine. I love it so much. I realized early on when I started working there I wanted to have projects to work on there using yarn that is available in the shop because I obviously want to support the owner, my boss, because she's amazing, but I also want to be able to, if somebody asks what I'm working on, point them to exactly the yarn that we sell that I'm working with because I have found so many customers who come in just want to make what you're wearing. <laughs> they're like, oh I like, or any of the samples on the wall, they're like, I want that, can you show me the yarn? I already have, I think, one lady in the knitting, the Thursday knitting group is making sweater number nine after I wore it one day, so that was fun. So I did buy some yarn from the shop that I work at and I'm excited to share those new cast-ons with you. And then I have like one exception to the rule cast-on because it has to do with Advent knitting. So I'm going to start the whips section with my new cast on, which is a pair of mittens. I'm so excited about these. I am knitting, it's called the Scattering Petals Mittens, and the pattern is by Dana Ray Makes on Ravelry. The yarn that I'm using for this project is my Olivia and Oliver Fibers Advent Calendar yarn. I had no idea until two weeks ago that advent knitting was a thing. I'd heard about yarn advent calendars. I knew that you open a new one each day, but I didn't know that you can actually knit on a small advent project every single day of December. Once I found that out, I started looking for advent projects. Nothing was really inspiring to me. I can't really envision myself wearing like most of the shawls that the patterns are. I didn't want to make a blanket. I didn't want to make a garment that I didn't know what it would look like. Once I saw this pattern for this pair of mittens, I was like, oh, perfect. I don't care what mittens turn out like. They'll be adorable no matter what. This is the start with days one, two, three, four, and five. And like I said, it's just number 10th today, so I'm a little bit behind, but that's because I got to a part in the pattern where um, I don't know what to do. So <laughs> dragging my feet a little bit, but I can show you how they will, how the next parts will work up. The next color 
is going to be this beautiful kind of almost Easter-y looking color. And then the ones after it are this light pink, this variegated color, and then this cream. So we're going in a fun direction. The advent calendar is called Wanderlust, so it's all based on travel locations. Pictures of travel locations, like for example, this one, the cream is called Malta, and she includes a little picture of the inspiration photo. I thought it would be fun since I'm recording today to go ahead and open up the December 10th color together. Ooh. Oh, and some tea. Thai lemongrass chai. Nice. Wat Arun. I don't know how to say that. But it's a temple in Bangkok. Derives its name from the Hindu god Aruna. Is among the best known of Thailand's landmarks. I'm sure I've seen a picture of it in my life somewhere, but there it is. Wat Arun. Sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. This is an amazing color. I'm into it. It's got some blue and yellow speckles, kind of teal speckles. That's going to be good in the lineup. So here's what's to come. Ooh, that is nice. Here's what's to come on my mittens, starting out with this like whole pink situation. Oh yeah, I'm knitting up the size medium on 2.5 millimeter needles. One is Chaogu, one is Luca. And I'm just, I, I had a blast on these the first five days that I worked on them. I'm really eager to get going on them again. I just need to pick a time to sit down and focus on the pattern so I know I don't make any more mistakes. That is my first new whip. I'm just going to quickly run through the projects that I'm working on. All, all my in progress, in progress works in progress. All my previously started works in progress, the ones that you guys know about, just to touch on them. So. First one I'm going to talk about is my pillow. I have made quite a bit of progress on this one. I should have put a stitch marker in, but here we go. I probably have, how many more balls of yarn do I have? One, two, three more balls of yarn. I'm pretty sure I will use them all, but again, I just need to make this 22 inches, so 44 because I'm flipping it in half and then seaming around the three, seaming down two sides and then putting in a zipper at the bottom. I've been working on this while my mom and I watch our Hallmark Christmas movies at night because it's a pretty mindless project. The waffle stitch is really easy to crochet. You just do, I don't even remember what it's called, but you like post, post stitch or crochet around the post or something like that. You can look up how to do a waffle stitch. It's very easy. And this is on just a six, six millimeter crochet hook or a size J. So I'm very excited about that. Once my second pillow is done, they'll go like next to each other on my bed. While there's just the one, it's kind of in the center covering up my naked pillow form behind it. It's so encouraging to see progress on your projects because that in itself is motivation to keep working and get it done. This one I'm knitting with an acrylic yarn. It is called, uh, it's Vanna's Choice from Lion Brand and the color is called Barley, which is this nice tweedy brown. So this will be nice and cozy when they're all done. The next one I'll mention is the socks for me, which are halfway done. This is uh, uh, the Vanilla Socks by Crazy Sock Lady. The yarn is Olivia and Oliver Fibers, again, in the color Pixie Dust. Here it is in cake form. Oh, so pretty. Full of nice Eastery pastels, and the contrast color, I think, is Desert Rose. This sock has been completed. I did it. Good for me. And I immediately cast on the second sock, and I'm pretty well into the leg. 10, 20, 30, 40, about 45 rows in. So I just have 15 more before the heel flap. Then we're off to the races. This one has also been getting some love because I think last time I was like at the gusset for this one and just cranked it out one night. So, 
really excited to get these done. Look how close we are. This one will probably, this, this will get done by the end of the year. I'm confident about that. I'm really excited about, well, I was about to say, I'm so excited for the week between Christmas and New Year's because when I had a full-time job, I got that whole week off and just did absolutely nothing. But now that I work in retail, <laughs> I'll probably be working, but I'll still have plenty of time for knitting. That one, I feel good about getting done by the end of the year. I guess maybe as I'm going through these, I should touch on how confident I am that they'll be done by the end of the year. Pillow cover, definitely. I feel good about that. Socks, I also feel good about those. Next whip. And here is my Sophie scarf that I am knitting with Yarn Bee Must Be Merino in the color Sage, I want to say, which is this very amazing light blue, squishy, soft merino acrylic blend. I don't have a tag, but... I just did my first row of decreases, I think. So it's exactly halfway done, which is a big improvement. It's like full pennant size, as opposed to the little nub that it was in my last episode. This, I just kept upstairs in the living room while my family was here for Thanksgiving and pretty much just knit on it whenever we were sitting in the living room chatting, which is a lot. It's like the main thing my family and I do. And since I started the decreases, every eighth round is gonna make it go so much faster. So I also feel confident that I will finish this by the end of the year. I'm knitting it exactly a pattern. This is the size small and it's on, I can't read, 3.5 millimeter needles. As you can see, I just use the tips. I find for the Sophie scarves, the cable just gets in the way. I know it's been a while since my last episode, but I still feel pretty good about the progress that I've made on my on my goal for 2022 so I feel confident also that that will get done because I know I could knit that much within a day so pick a day Chelsea I feel like that might be kind of all I feel like I'm not missing anything the ones that I haven't touched on yet in this episode are ones I haven't touched in real life either I have the sweetheart rib top by Friday knits which is being worked up in a tangled mess of yarn. It is a Fiber Spates Vivacious 4 ply, which is a sock yarn in the color Gecko. And I have not worked on that one. This is one I do not feel confident will get done in 2022 because I haven't been motivated to work on it. Basically because it's not a big cozy knit sweater. It's like a camisole. It actually is camisole. And I feel like I'll be more inspired to work on it in the spring. So this one, I don't think it's gonna get done by the end of the year, and I feel okay about that. Same with my Rubis blouse, which is a refined knitwear pattern, and you may recognize when I pull it out because it looks exactly the same <laughs> as it has since hmm, May. This is being knit in Knitting for Olives Soft Silk Mohair in Dusty Olive. I, I have been feeling the urge to work on this, so maybe now that this is done, I'll lean into it a little more, but I don't feel confident that it will get done this year. Maybe it'll be early next year. I know there's just like a tiny wisp of fabric in here, but I can already tell it is so soft. One of my other, my mohair sweater is knit with Knitting for Olive and it's so soft. So I already know this is gonna be like so nice to wear. I'm thinking, that could get done in like January or February. Going through my projects, I'm always like, wow, I want that article of clothing so badly in my wardrobe. Just because this bag is so cute. Let's show it again. I got this at Black Sheep Knitworks in the Hamptons on Long Island. And it's probably my favorite project bag. It's a little pom-pom. So cute. So now I can move on to my new whips, which are projects that I started using yarn from the store that I work at. First is a sweater project. This sweater kind of came out of nowhere, but my little sister has a sweater from a company called Baba, I think, which is like a Spanish brand. I'm 90% sure both of those things are accurate. And it's just this great brown v-neck, really chunky sweater. And I was really inspired by the silhouette. And the closest pattern I found was uh, my favorite things knitwears v-neck sweater number 14 so this is oh falling off of the needle uh, okay 
I don't know how best to show this, but I've I cast it on. This is the back, and this fabric is working up so nicely. Let me tell you what it is. I'm using a new to me yarn, which is Brooklyn Tweed, and it's called Shelter, which is a American Targi Columbia wool. It's a worsted weight, and I'm using the color Wood Smoke. This is 50 grams, 140 yards. It's this really nice kind of dusty brownish gray color. And I'm holding it together with the lace weight that we carry, which is Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And this is the color 689, which I think is called Branch. Like I said, together, here they are in cake form. They just make this really nice, squishy, fluffy fabric. This yarn is unlike anything I've worked with before. It's like a dry, hardy type of yarn. Like, not scratchy, but very rustic. And I really love it with the kid silk haze in there. It's just exquisite. I think it would be a quick knit if I wasn't exclusively working on it at work, which is my loophole. I was allowed to cast on a new project as long as I didn't work on it at home. Only worked on my already in progress whips at home and work on this at work. So this is just the progress of my lunch break knitting. I have never knit a v-neck anything before, but I really like the look of a chunky v-neck over a turtleneck or a t-shirt, just how my little sister wears her baba sweater. So I'm very excited to have this as a finished product. And I'm just running out of knitwear to wear to work because I have not th knit that many garments since my knitting career began. So that's my first new whip. The second one is sort of a DOA whip. So this was actually the first yarn that I purchased at my job and it is Blue Sky Fibers Wolf Stock Tweed in the color Fern Frond, which is this amazing tweed green yarn. But what I first spotted was this Kid Silk Haze in the color Jelly. And as soon as I saw this shade, I was like, I need to have it. What can I make with it? And I just thought these were such a great combination and decided to make a Manhattan hat bulky, which is a Tori Knits NYC pattern. I've made the Manhattan hat before, once for me and once for my little niece. So when I saw that Tori was coming out with a bulky weight edition, I jumped at the chance. This is an Aran weight yarn, but as you can see, it's quite thick. And with the mohair, I just, I think it'll work up to be a good gauge. As you can see, it does, you know, there's a tail here, so you would think I've started my project, but this is what's left of my, my tubular cast-on attempt. Tubular cast-on is not for the faint of heart, and it is also not ideal on circular needles. I was having the darndest time. Like, you, the way that the tubular cast-on works, once the stitches are past the needle and onto the cable, it's virtually impossible to tell them apart. So I gassed on like two times and finally my boss at the yarn shop suggested that I do the cast on on a straight needle and then transfer it to circulars, which I thought was genius because with the tubular cast on, I think you knit like four rows anyway before you join in the round. So I was like, that's the perfect idea. And so she let me borrow some straight needles from the shop. I haven't done the cast on yet, as you can see, because, you know. It's just so disheartening when you end a project on a note like this, <laughs> or when you abandon a project on a note like this. It's hard to, to get the gumption to uh, start back up again, but this is going to be a really cute hat. I can tell you right now, I'm so excited to work this up. I have four days off work right now, and so maybe I'll like put this on my to-do list, just cast it on, and then I'll have it ready to go at work, because I cannot... My breaks are like 15 minutes or half an hour at the yarn shop, and I there's no way I could do a tubular cast on in that time. So the cast on is going to have to happen at home, and then it'll be a work-only project. So that is my next one. The final project that I've cast on at work is over here, my tote bag. Another yarn I fell in love with at the shop is Rowan Felted Tweed, and it's a DK weight yarn that is... 50% wool, 25% alpaca, and 25% viscose. I swear it comes in like 50 colors. It's amazing. It has a very rustic look. It's tweedy. It's so soft for what it is. 
I just love it. I immediately wanted to knit up a pair of socks in it. We have a sample at the store with a two by two ribbed sock. So that's what I wanted to make. I got this green color that I just showed, which is shade number 158. It might be called like forest or pine or something like that. And then for this sock, the contrast color, I believe is called stone. I don't know that I have the code number anymore, but it's definitely stone. So that's what I'm using for the cuff and then eventually the toe. But this is my first pair of DK weight socks. I'm loving it. They're working up so quickly. Again, I've only been working on these on like 15 minute breaks at work and I'm already on the gusset. So the pattern is Crazy Sock Lady DK weight sock pattern. I doubled the length of the leg because my boots that I wear are pretty, they have a pretty high tall shaft. I wanted this to definitely like go above. The sock pattern, which is free on Ravelry, I believe, it says to do like a 30 round leg and I did 60. They're gonna be nice and tall and cozy for boot socks. Truly this yarn is like exactly what I would wanna buy for boot socks if I was like shopping at LL Bean or something. And then I showed this red color. I'm just going to knit a regular pair of vanilla socks with stockinette leg and foot. And this shade I think is called Zinnia and it is 198. And it's just this really nice, bright, like pop, wintery red. I love it so much. This is the first color that I fell in love with and I had to have it. Those are all of the whips. I have just a couple of acquisitions. Some of them were integrated obviously with my whips, things I bought at the store. I do have the November Lord of the Rings Sock Yarn Club colorway and then my Sorelli Yarn Autumn in New York collection finally came in. I'll start with the Long Dog Yarn Lord of the Rings Yarn Club November colorway, which is this extremely moody, greenish brown mossy gray gorgeousness the colorway is called i am no man and uh, if you know the series you already know the scene inspiration it is when aowen slays the witch king in battle and uh, he oh yeah so he says no man can kill me and then she like whips off her helmet because she's undercover as a soldier and says, I am no man. And then like stabs him. It's a really amazing scene. One of the best in the whole series. And I'm so excited that Brandy chose that scene for the inspiration for November. And the color just turned out like epic. It just makes you feel like feminine power. I just, I love it so much. Oh, there's even some blue in here. Look at that. Wow, this colorway, exquisite. I'm gonna be so sad when the Lord of the Rings Yarn Club is over. There's one more month. It's been such a joy in 2022 to open these every month. And then the rest is Sorelli Yarn. My order came in this enormous and beautiful box. It's like a little storefront. And so I'm gonna show some of the sweater quantities that I got from the collection. Because again, I just, me and New York City are like, we're not really two peas in a pod because we're extremely different, but we love each other. Where to begin? The first and most important colorway that I got is newsprint. It is this amazing antique beige with bluish black speckles that just looks exactly like the New York Times. I've always loved the newspaper. I did the New York Times crossword for a long time. I was in the newspaper like when I was a fashion blogger, which was like the pinnacle of my career. When I lived in Minneapolis, the Star Tribune did an article about me and the page designer for my article ended up being my best friend, Emily. I met her through that. She was designing the feature in the Star Tribune, emailed me for some photos, and the rest was history. And then finally, I've always loved the musical Newsies. Like, within the last couple years, I fell in love with the Broadway edition of Newsies. So, newspaper has just always been everywhere in my life. And so this sweater quantity is going to be a Louvre sweater, which is a petite knit pattern. So I got the classic DK, which is 100% superwash merino, 231 yards each. It's even better in real life in person when I saw this colorway I just 
fell on the floor. It is so good. And I can't believe it's finally here. The second sweater quantity that I got was also in the DK weight. This colorway is called Townhouse. Yes, it's white. I always try to talk myself out of getting hand dyed light neutrals like white because you can get really beautiful white yarn from commercial brands, but A, can't beat the quality of hand dyed yarn. B, it's about the experience, right? Like this the new york collection townhouse like the name the shades the depth my gosh it evokes a whole other level of joy and i especially connected to this colorway because one of my first favorite memories in new york was my friend adriana she moved there she still lives there but she moved there like five or six years ago or something like that and her first apartment was on the upper east side and i used to visit her all the time it was when I lived in Minneapolis, so it was like a two hour flight. One of my favorite memories was our like nightly walks throughout the Upper East Side. We would go at like twilight or just on the way home in the evening when it was just starting to get dark outside and you could see inside like the golden candlelit glow of these exquisitely decorated townhouses because everyone on the Upper East Side is a millionaire. And I just remember like seeing, it was just like a little picture into these people's lives. The brick outside was exactly this color and we would like point out different things to each other that we saw. There'd be like a library in one window, like someone's personal library or like this amazing, you know, kitchen or like chandeliers. It was just so much fun. And so this colorway brought me back to those evenings with Adriana, which is one of my favorite New York City memories. I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to have to be something <laughs> really special. I don't know if it should be like a cardigan or some kind of simple pullover just to let the really subtle depth in this color really come through. I just don't know. It's such a nice cream. Another sweater quantity that I picked out was, again, so much influence from just the name of the color, which is theater. It's this amazing, I don't know, brick pink can be a thing. If it is, that's, that's what this color is. It's just nice, right? And like I said, uh, talking about newsprint, Newsies is not only one of my favorite musicals, it like became my lifestyle when I learned, when I found it. Over the last two years, like theater has completely changed my life, like truly. I have always been a writer, but now I'm like, I need to write plays, I need to write musicals. I wanna experience like writing in every single genre and like, Part of the reason I moved to New York earlier for the summer, earlier this year, to be around the theater, to be to be able to go to shows, even though I had a, you know, everything went wrong when I was in New York and I was sick pretty much the whole time. I still got to go to a handful of shows and it was transformative. So this color is going to be really special to knit up into something, into a nice memory. This one I got the classic sock base. So it's 100% superwash merino again but uh, a fingering weight and 400 yards. I'm planning to hold this together with a mohair. I couldn't justify getting a sweater quantity of the mohair for this sweater, but I figured I could find something that would go nicely from a commercial brand. So if you have an idea for a fingering weight mohair sweater that this would look nice in, let me know. I'm just so thrilled with this order and how the yarn is in person. Holding it in my hands, it makes me feel exactly how I thought it would make me feel when I ordered it. And then I'll just run you through the two sock sets that I picked out from the collection. The first one actually has my second favorite colorway from the whole collection, which is Nolita. It's this amazing beige and misty pink variegated colorway. And the accent color is Theater, which I just showed you. I couldn't justify getting another sweater quantity of just Nolita even though I wanted it so badly so I gave myself a sock set and boy if these aren't going to be the sweetest little socks in the whole world I haven't decided what kind of maybe they should just be a vanilla sock because this yarn is like so nice but it's their 80-20 superwash merino and nylon base which 80-20 is my favorite sock yarn base for sure and then the other sock yarn that I could not resist was Jazz in the Park. Central Park is where I spend so much of my time when I go to New York. This color just looks like Jazz in Central Park. Like, 
there's so much going on, but all of it works together. Just like jazz. The, the accent color is Bryant Park. I don't know how this will knit up, whether it's like kind of stripey. There you have it. So much joy in this container, I tell you. I only have a little bit, since I talked about like the Louvre sweater and what I'm making, I only have a couple of plans to share with you and they pretty much revolve around Sophie shawls. The Wandering Flock, who is a hand dyer in Brooklyn, New York, recently posted a two-tone Sophie shawl on Instagram using her own yarn and I was so inspired. I was like, I already wanted to knit up a Sophie shawl, but when I saw the two-tone one, I was like, okay. So I've been trying to shop my stash. <laughs> I just feel like the Sophie shawl is such a great stash busting project as much as I might want to pick out the perfect combination of two yarns to knit up. I'm sure I have something that will work. And I think that I've found an intriguing combination, which are these two. They're both a DK weight. This is Lucky Charms by Scranton Stitcher. And then this one is Ghost from Hedgehog Fibers. When I came up with the combination, I was like, hmm, I'm just gonna take off the labels so you can see a little more. This, the Lucky Charms does have purple in it. It's not quite the same warm, lilac purple but looking at them now i feel like they would be cute like i don't know on camera's giving it a little something extra and i'm not actually sure how much purple is in this skein Maybe i'll just open it up and see but see okay so here's a chunk i guess there's only one no there's some up here too I think it could. Now that I'm like, I think that would be fun. And something that I want to cast on relatively soon. Maybe I can commit to like finishing two more of my end of the year whips and then cast on a Sophie shawl. It has been like between 20 and 30 degrees when I leave for work in the morning and I don't have a hand knit scarf. I'm realizing that that's something that's missing from my wardrobe and I need to rectify that immediately. What are your thoughts? Should I be unsure about this yarn combination or should I be confident about it? The other idea that I had is I have a fingering weight and a lace weight which are from Bigfoot Yarn Co. in the color Ironborn and so it's not quite the right gauge but since it's a scarf, it doesn't super matter and as long as I have the yardage, we're good to go. I thought this would make a really nice Sophie shawl, but you know, when am I going to find the time to knit too? In the last episode, there were some, I think the caramel sweater I said was the next one I was going to cast on, and I think that's still true. But the other thing I've been really like itching to work on is a slipover. I had talked about making the Ingrid slipover, but I'm kind of falling out of my Ingrid phase right now, the Ingrid sweater and the Ingrid slipover. They're just not speaking to me in this moment. I think the weekend slipover by Petite Knit was one that I was looking at, and it's just a, again, it's like a v-neck, which I have not knit before, but I think would be a good option for the yarn that I have that I showed in the last podcast. So those are a couple little plans that I have to wrap up kind of my acquisitions and what's going on in the future. I feel good about everything. I'm really excited for the end of the year. I'm excited for 2023. I got big plans. I have ideas for color work. I have ideas for cables. I have so many knitting techniques that I feel like I'm going to tackle head first in 2023. I'm just excited to see what the new year brings. Ready for a fresh start. I know this time of year we all feel ready for a fresh start, which is, you know, how it goes as the new year approaches. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I actually have been filming a vlog over the last week because I've been having a little bit of FOMO watching everyone's Vlogmas videos. It's been such a fun way to get into the spirit this year. So we get to see a little peek into what it's like working at the yarn shop. Some progress on a bunch of the, well, at least on this sweater, on a few of the things that I talked about in this video. Look out for that next week, which is really exciting. I hope you guys enjoy it. Then sometime after that, before the end of the year, I'm gonna film a roundup of everything that I knit in 2022 which I cannot believe this year is coming to a close. Wow. I think most of you know I started knitting at the end of January. It'll be like my first knit projects up up until now. So 
but I'm really excited to take a walk down memory lane and revisit some of those things. Yeah, I think it's just gonna be a great way to prepare for the new year and see how far I've come and how far I have yet to go. Before things get any cheesier, I'm gonna wrap up. Thanks again for watching. Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to my channel if you'd like to keep up with the projects I mentioned today and see when they get done, how they turn out, anything along those lines, and I will catch you next time. Bye.